Guys, it's time to check out the Monta Noble. I know a lot of people were begging for this video, so it's time. Let's let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about the case size. It's familiar to some of the other ones, like the Triumph and the Atlas and stuff like that. I don't have any of those next, you know, to show it next to it, so I don't know if there's any subtle differences in the case or bezel or anything like that. And I'm just, I can't remember off the top of my head. So hopefully you guys can chime in in the comments if you are noticing any big differences between them other than the obvious, which is the dial and hands. But uh, 38 and a half millimeter case, 47.25 is what I measure lug to lug. Man, the finishing in the design of these Monta watches is just top notch. I think that's all what a lot of people, you know, can't understand whether you look at pictures or video or anything like that and unfortunately there's no shows going on right now you know back when the shows were going on you could go visit Justin and check out the booth and and see the watch so um, I'll just try to show it the best I can in the video but 47 and a quarter lug to lug it's only 10 millimeter thick on the website it says 9.7 so I don't know if I just have a little variance in my calipers but flat sapphire crystal up there with seven layers of anti-reflective coating on the underside. So really good crystal on this one. 20 millimeter lug width. Bracelet is phenomenal. I mean, the bracelet is one of the highlights, certainly, of the Manta lineup on top of the fact that the watches are just killer on their, on their own. But the bracelets, you know, taper really nice. This one tapers down to a 16. And then you have this, uh, like, steel button basically that pops into that lower piece and just really snaps in it's really secure and then you can open it up and then you have the fold over clasp um, the big change on this one is you basically have a quick adjust here and if you zoom in they did actually do a ceramic ball bearing in there so and there's there's three positions that you can adjust it to one Two, three, four. They said three in the thing. I count more than three. I don't know. So there's one, two, three, four. So I guess it's three positions uh, that you can adjust. And the fourth one is your fixed position. I guess. Something like that. But it's easy to use. It snaps in. It's very secure. It's not like little slots. I mean, you can see in there, it's it's very defined and it goes click. I mean, you can, it's very tactile. You can definitely feel it jumping into place. And then the bracelet is all individual link, links. So like the center link is all separate. So you can like fold it up on itself, which is just going to make it drape. Just like crazy good on a wrist. The only complaint that I think that some smaller wristed people are going to have is how long the clasp is underneath. So... Um, I don't know. I mean, you're talking a totally different clasp design to remedy that. I mean, this is something they, you know, worked on very hard to get this style of um, fastener. So uh, it just might be something you have to live with if that bothers you. And then display case back on this one. You can see custom rotor. This one has the SW300 in it. When I was talking to Justin, there is some weird things going on with getting movements right now. Like, I don't know, it seems like it's been going on for years, right, guys? Um, but they're probably going to have the SW300, and then they modify it because they have their own watch guy in-house, and they modify it and do some things, and they call it the Caliber M22, Monte Caliber M22. But there is a slight, slight chance that they would end up with the Soprod M100. But when I talked to Justin, he said they're definitely shooting for the um, uh, the Salida SW300. So if we take a look at the dial, very clean, tastefully classic done. You know, gone are the, on this one, you know, versus like the uh, Triumph that I had in the past. This one is just more timeless, I believe. The, I mean, the other ones are great. But this one is easily the most timeless watch they've made, in my opinion. The indices still kind of flow slightly and interrupt into the Riot, or the chapter, if you look closely. So it's very purposely built like that. I like that. It's not like off-the-shelf parts. The handsets are beautifully polished and are rhodium-coated. So they won't tarnish or change or anything like that. You have your framed-in date, Swiss made at the bottom. 150 meter water resist, that really nicely done Monta logo up top there with their 
you know, uh, all capital font. I'm digging that hand set. And look how far the minute hand goes out there. I mean, it covers like over half, maybe two thirds of the indice as it goes around. And then the seconds hand basically follows that same line, maybe a touch longer actually in the seconds hand. So it's super legible, easy to read, just a beautiful, there's two colors right now in this pre-order and I'm glad that Justin sent over this one. It's white, silverish white. It's it's not an off-white, so, and it's not really pearl, It's but it's going to be playful in um, natural light especially. So let's, and then there's the crown, signed crown. The crown is uh, six millimeter at its widest point and it's Almost has uh, like a gourmet cupcake look to it. Yeah, see, I got a gourmet. It's fancy. All right, let's pop this thing on wrist, and then I will show it next to. I know a lot of people wanted to see. This is what I was wearing, by the way. Uh, a lot of people wanted to see it next to the Tudor Black Bay Forty One that I own. Um, I didn't want to make it about the, you know comparing these two watches because they don't really compare. But some people had asked to see it next to it, and I'll certainly do that. It'll just be towards the end of the video, so you can see there on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's so sleek and like softened. Every Manta I've tried, that's the only way I can describe it is it's like all the edges are softened. So there's no hot spots. There's virtually no chance of a hot spot. And uh, it just it just melts into your wrist. It is, uh, I don't know. It's You'd have to hopefully try one in the metal sometime is the only thing I can explain to you. Hopefully... You can look at enough pictures and read enough reviews and see enough videos to make that choice because it is a chunk of money. The pre-order on these is $1,600. I get it. It's a lot of money. But I'm telling you, this is a $1,600 watch. So when you compare it to a lot of other watches, they're not priced wrong. So here it is next to the Tudor Black Bay 41. Obviously, the 41 is a much larger watch. So when you're looking at comparing it to... I don't know. I think you would compare it more to size-wise, maybe the um, Oyster Perpetual 39, which I don't have that one anymore. I think it would compare more like size-wise, kind of like that. Basically a different case shape and everything like that, but uh, similar in size and dimensions and feel and look. Uh, but, you know, whereas the Tudor is definitely more like bold and squared off and you you know you could potentially have hot spots with you know edges like this you're not going to get that with the manta so anyway um let's take a look at the loom that's pretty bright well i don't know what loom they used i didn't see it in the description let's find out together uh that looks kind of bluish is that blue that's bluish i think that's bgw9 what do you guys think yeah I'm thinking that is BGW9. Nice application for how thin those indices and the hands are. That is bright. They did a great job of the loom. And then you definitely have your orientation with the double sticks up at the 12. Well done, guys. Well done at Monta again. Thanks, Justin, for sharing this. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next vid.